You ready? Yes. Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to Up In Your Business with Carrie McCoy, a production of FlagandBanner.com. Through storytelling and conversational interviews, this weekly radio show offers listeners firsthand insight into starting and running a business, the ups and downs of risk-taking, and the commonalities of successful people. Connect with Carrie through her candid, often funny, and informative weekly blog, where you'll read and can comment on life as wife, mother, daughter, and entrepreneur. And now it's time for Carrie McCoy to get all up in your business. I'm Carrie McCoy, and it's time for me to get up in your business. Today's show is very relevant and important to us all. We're going to talk health care in America with my guest, the expert, Robbie Davis, founder and owner of the Robbie Davis Agency, a locally owned insurance company specializing in employee benefits with a focus on group health insurance. We hope through our conversation and storytelling, you will learn something, want to get involved, or be inspired to take action in your own life. And at the bottom of the hour, we'll be answering questions via phone and email. For me, the act taking action began over 40 years ago when I founded Arkansas Flag and Banner. During the last four decades, Flag and Banner has grown from door-to-door sales to telemarketing to mail order and catalog sales and now relies heavily on the Internet. Each change in sales strategy required a change in company thinking and procedures. My confidence, leadership knowledge, and my company grew. My initial $400 investment now produces nearly $4 million in annual sales. Each week on the show, you'll hear candid conversations between me and my guest about real-world experiences on a variety of businesses and topics that I hope you'll find interesting. Starting and running a business or organization is like so many things. It takes persistence, perseverance, and patience. No one, and I mean no one, has a straight path to success. I worked part-time jobs for nine years before Arkansas Flag and Banner grew enough to support just me. Today, we have 10 departments and 25 co-workers, thus reminding us all, small businesses are the fuel of our country's economic engine and empower people's lives. Before we start, I want to introduce you to the people at the table. We have my technician, Tim, who will be running the board and taking your calls. Say hello, Tim. Hello, Tim. My guest today is Miss Robbie Davis, founder of the Robbie Davis Agency. After graduating from the University of Central Arkansas in 1985 with a BBA in marketing communications, she took a job with Arkansas's first HMO, American Health Maintenance Organization. I didn't know that's what HMO stood for. It only took two years in the insurance business before Robbie was noticed and recruited by Health Advantage Insurance Company, where, as their account executive, she became the top seller for five years in a row. Noticed again for her insurance understanding and work ethic, Robbie was recruited by Prudential Health Insurance Company, where she says, I learned the most. Not only did she learn the most, she sold the most. At the corporate headquarters in Newark, New Jersey, Robbie was honored and nationally recognized for selling more group policies than any other Prudential agent in the nation. In 1996, Robbie made a bold decision. Thinking her clients would be better served if she was an independent agent, she left the security of a big company, and from her kitchen table, pregnant with her first child, she founded the Robbie Davis Agency. Now, over 20 years later, the agency has grown to nine employees and recently moved to a bigger location on Henson Loop in West Little Rock, Arkansas. Robbie is proud to be one of the few agencies in greater Little Rock area that is still 100% locally owned and operated. The Robbie Davis Agency specializes in employee benefits with a focus on group health insurance. And that is exactly how she and I came to meet. Welcome to the table, the ambitious, well-trained, and easy-to-understand insurance agent and owner, Robbie Davis. Well, thank you very much. Hello. Hello. We have a lot to talk about. Yes, ma'am. We have the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, and how the recent executive order President Trump signed will affect individuals and groups insurance in Arkansas, Medicare supplements and open enrollment, drug plans, Advantage plans, which I'm not sure what they are. You're going to explain all of this to us. And one thing I love about you is that you really talk down into layman terms. I can really understand insurance when I talk to you. But before we do all of that, give us a little background about you. You went to school for marketing, got a degree in marketing, but took a job right out of college selling insurance. Why? 
um, because that was the first job that I could get that paid me enough not to have to move back to my hometown. Which is where? Pine Bluff. Arkansas. Arkansas. Great place, but I wanted to be on my own after being on my own four years at UCA. I didn't want to go back home, so... And that paid me enough. I had six hours worth of training on what a HMO was. They were brand new to Arkansas or to the nation, probably. Mm -hmm. And I remember vividly, they gave me a telephone, a phone book, a legal pad, a pen, and said, make 50 calls a day until you get an appointment. That's the way we did it back then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did they give you a script? No. I mean, they gave me that six hours worth of training on what a HMO was. So my first appointment, I just went down there and rattled what I knew. But anyway, it was a good way to get started. So you just get thrown in. Why do you think you were successful? Just blindly calling people. Well, one thing was I was the youngest on that sales force. Everybody else was older and seasoned and everything. And I think I thought, okay, I've got something to prove here. So I just worked hard. Have always worked hard. Boy, I'll say, top so, seller, and, top seller, recognized in the nation. Everywhere you've been, you've worked hard. Yes. Yeah. People think there's some secret to success, and you're like, there is. Work hard. That's exactly right. And there's not a lot of luck involved. You know, it's working hard. Um, so you um, you made phone calls. Were you scared to death to sit there and make phone I calls? I was. And then my very first appointment, I'll never forget it. You know, they said, oh, yeah, we can see you. Can you be down here today at 2? And I didn't have any idea what I was going to say, but I figured it out after I got there. And, of course, I knew more about, they, more about it than they did. I think that's so. a great advice. Even though you don't think you know a lot about a subject because you're new at the job, like if you're selling flags, when people come to work at the flag at my flag company, I say even though you don't know a whole lot about flags, you know more than most people do. Absolutely. That's right. And that's what you have to remember. And I was raised by a single mother, and she raised me to be strong and independent. And Try new things. Mm-hmm. So uh, was there a particular incident that happened that made you decide that you wanted to Start your own company. Yes. Um, I found, you know, when, when I worked for Health Advantage or Prudential, and they were both great places, I could only sell that product because I was a captive agent. So, if, you know, if Health Advantage wasn't the most um, compatible with what you needed or the most competitive, then I lost the sale. So finally, I got enough nerve to go out and try my own. And it worked real well. Of course, um, I have been blessed with a good husband, and he had a job at Nationwide as a claims master claims adjuster at the time. So it wasn't look like we were going down to a single income, but it you know, was a huge change. And so um, I felt real good at four months pregnant and everything, and I thought, well, this is as good a time as any to make this happen. And it was interesting. You know, people took pity on me. As mm -hmm. a pregnant lady out trying to sell insurance. And I remember 21 years ago, we wore the dresses and the pumps and the hose. And, you know, you got dressed up. Mm -hmm. You know, ladies did. So anyway, I knew I had, uh, you know, about six, uh, say about five months to get out and get it done before she got here. And so anyway, it worked out real well. But I had my very first commission check was $56. So I was getting new tires put on my car. And um, anyway, I said, do y'all need health insurance? It was three people. I mean, I'll never forget that either. It's $56. Did you sell the first call you went on? Yes. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. So that did great things yeah. for your confidence. Yes, it did. And like I said, when a lady shows up that's pregnant, people react a little differently. I didn't really have that plan, but it worked out quite well. Well, and a young lady, I think, or a young man, a young person, I think people are, I know I am, and I didn't realize this when I was young, but as I, now that I'm older, when I see a young person trying hard, I am inspired by them, and I want to help them, and I want to, you know, I want to do what I can to help them because yeah. I'm impressed with their um, uh, their work ethic. Yeah, absolutely. Um, my son is a senior at Little Rock Central, and he is just now getting some confidence that maybe what he wants to do for a living he can actually do. He's into art and film and animation and all that. And so he's excited about his future, and it gives me new energy. Oh, that's you know, sweet. Yep, so. You know, I think that, you, that, that young people starting off need to realize that just trying will get you there. That's right. That's all it really is. Yeah. You don't have to be the best. You don't have to be the smartest. You just have to keep trying, and you will get somewhere that you didn't know you were going to be. Absolutely. We talk about that all the time at the office. I have an incredible team of people that have the same work ethic, you know, that I do and that we do. And we talk about there's no real science to it. It's saying what you're doing, what you say. Being there to answer the phone, responding in a timely manner. Wow. Really, that's Somebody it. write that down. Say that one more time. Uh, doing what you say. Doing what you say. Um, being there to answer the phone when they call. 
and and then doing it all in a timely manner. So like when a new client calls me, I take down the information and we get back with them within 24 or 48 hours. We don't wait a week. You know what drives me crazy is when I call a real estate agent who has a sign up and her phone is full. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just like, what? And see, we pay a receptionist to be there to answer the door and the phone. You know, you don't get a voice. Well, that's old school. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, that is kind of old school. <laughs> but it works. Okay. One of the, you're one of the few insurance agents that I know that was not afraid of Obamacare when it came out. Why were you not threatened? I just decided that this is all I know. So instead of trying to fight it, let's accept it. Let's embrace it. Let's see what we can do with it and go with the flow. And it's worked out very well. We've got a whole individual department now that has done incredible over four years. But now that's where the most heartburn is right now in that department. And, of course, the stress goes throughout the agency. Because, see, open enrollment is going to start here very soon. 11 to 1215 is open enrollment for, for, indi- Obamacare. for Obamacare for individuals under age 65. And we don't have the rates. We don't have the final products. And we're talking about, what is that, a week away, two weeks away maybe? And then, you know, so in last year and years past, it's always been a 90-day open enrollment. And so now it's been reduced to 45 days. So you can't just enroll anytime you want to? No. You have to be losing other coverage to enroll. Oh, my gosh. I did not know that. All right. We're going to take a break. When we come back, Robbie Davis will help us untangle the health care issues facing Americans today. We'll talk about the future of Obamacare, President Trump's commitment to unraveling this Affordable Care Act, Medicare supplements, drug plans, open enrollment, Advantage plans. And at the bottom of the hour, we'll be taking calls and we'll give you the number then. Listen to all UIYB past and present interviews by going to flagandbanner.com and clicking on Radio Show. Also, by joining our email list and liking us on Facebook, you'll get a reminder notification the day of the show with a sneak peek of that day's guest. Back to you, Carrie. You're listening to Up In Your Business with me, Carrie McCoy. I'm speaking today with Robbie Davis, owner and founder of the health insurance called the Robbie Davis Agency in Little Rock, Arkansas. Okay, Robbie, before the break, you were about to tell us about open enrollment, so we want to talk about that. In an effort to dismantle the Affordable Care Act, President Trump signed an executive order that will knowingly push low-income Americans into no insurance or into junk insurance plans. Should we talk about... We've got so much. We, should we talk about that part right now, or should or do you want to talk about this open enrollment? Let's well, go ahead. And, and I can kind of talk about one, and then it'll okay. flow into the other. Okay, so once a year, we have open enrollment for anybody that's uninsured and not enrolled anywhere. They can go online or come to our office or whatever and enroll, no matter what their pre-existing conditions are. You can come and enroll in a plan for January 1st. And that could be a plan for Affordable Care Act. Yeah, you can either pay your own way, or if you're eligible for a premium subsidy, then you would get a subsidy. And that's what Trump just got rid of was the subsidy. Well, there were, there's two subsidies. There's a premium subsidy to help with the cost of the insurance, and then there is a cost-sharing reduction subsidy. And that is, let's say that the plan has a $2,500 deductible, for example. Depending on your income, if you're up to 250% of the poverty level, those people in the past have gotten cost-sharing reduction subsidies that were paid. Let's say that Blue Cross Blue Shield is the insurance carrier, and they have an insurance plan that's a $2,500 deductible. And if you're low income, maybe your deductible was reduced to $200. And then the government was paying Blue Cross Blue Shield for that difference in the 200 and the 2500 So me as a low-income person, let's say, I only have a $200 deductible. Or maybe instead of having a $25 copay, I have a $5 copay. So it's those subsidies that the executive order took away. And subsidies means the money that the government is going to pay the health insurance to bridge the gap between your deductible, your $200 yes. deductible, and right. what the insurance company would have normally charged you. Right. Well, so you have a premium. And so those subsidies... And that's the cost of the the insurance. Yeah, cost of the insurance that you pay monthly. So depending on your income and your age and your household income, number on your tax return, you can get a premium subsidy. So those are still in place. And those go to who? And that goes to the insurance. That one goes to the insurance to help make up for the fact that you can't pay enough. That's right. So let's say that my premium is $500, but I'm low income, so maybe the government pays 300 of that. And I only have to pay 200 Then I only have to pay 200 of that. So that's still in place. But it's the deductible and coinsurance help that the people 
are going to lose if something doesn't change. Well, everybody I talk to is confused about that, per usual, uh, well, because the national, it's confusing. Well, and the national news said premium subsidies. Well, that's why they're confused. Mm-hmm. And everybody that I told them you were coming on the show, they said, ask them if my... Ask them if my uh, premiums, my cost of health insurance is going to go up. And it's not. Well, it is Um, because, um, okay, so let's say any carrier. We only have three carriers on the the Arkansas market, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Qualchoice, and Ambetter. So those are the three carriers that you can get if you live in Arkansas and want an individual plan. So let's say that I purchased Blue Cross. Well, Blue Cross is going to charge one premium for a $2,500 deductible, and it's going to charge a higher premium for a $200 deductible because they're going to be more on the line for mm-hmm. claims. Because they're trying to make money. So they're trying to make money. So when those subsidies are taken away from the deductible and co-pays, that is going to raise the rate because, and, and they're going up 21%. You said that your premium will not, subsidy will still be there. But you're going to lose the subsidy that was paid to the insurance companies that covers your deductible. Right. And those are going away. But, of course, premiums were going to go up January 1 anyway before that was taken away. So you're saying you think premiums are going to go up because they're no longer doing the deductible subsidy. That's right. They were going to go up anyway, but they're going to go up more so if those are not put back in. But I also read that they're going to move us into junk insurance plans which is what we had prior to Obamacare. We had junk insurance plans. You could get in there and get yourself some sort of insurance, but when you tried to make a claim, they had every kind of loophole, and it never was what you thought it was. And they were literally called, it's like junk bonds. They were called junk insurance plans. Right, and of course, that's what we're going to be looking at if the Affordable Care Act plans fall apart. I mean, and and then what that is is, say, a young fella, a young male, you know, he doesn't need maternity care. Maybe he doesn't need the mental health care. He doesn't need all the bells and whistles that are under the Obamacare plans. Because, you know, like, I'm paying for maternity. I'm too old to have a child. I'm paying for mental health. I'm paying Under for, the Obamacare? Uh, under the Obamacare. So there's all these things in there that we may not need that we're paying for, and that keeps the rates up. So what they're trying to do is say, you know, you can kind of pick and choose like a supplement. You know, you go through and check, you know, yes, I do want mental health. Yes, I do want office visits flu shots, you know, broken bones can be covered at the emergency room, that ER copay and that type of thing. So they'd be tailor-made. But the problem with that is that the people that know they're going to need the mental health coverage, they know they're active in sports and might have an ER visit, they're going to purchase that, and then, you know, the claims are going to be high. So it just has, you know, insurance is risk management, and everybody has to be in the pool. That's one thing, one reason Obamacare hasn't worked is because the penalties are not high enough for everybody to join. They say, well, heck, the penalty is less expensive than the premium. I'll just go uninsured, thank you very much, because I can't afford the premium. So we've got all the young healthy still uninsured. Yes, the young people are not insured because it's not mandated for everyone. Well, it is. It still but is. But like you said, the penalty yeah. is so small, it's, it doesn't really make it it's mandated. Small, it, yeah, it's not as painful as the premium. Yeah, so you can't, so now your pool of, which is always true, even before Obamacare came around, we'd try to offer health insurance to people at Arkansas Flag and Banner, and the healthy people never wanted it, and the sick people were like, I want it. So it was. And then you got a huge increase, and then the healthier fell off again, and then you just have a nucleus of claims, and then the premiums are unaffordable. So what's the answer? It's just so frustrating. What's the answer? We need to come up with a plan that everybody can afford, everybody can join, and yeah, you know, maybe have a little bit of choosing to, you know, you don't need a mental health rider, you don't need the maternity, and we all know men don't need that, and ladies of certain ages, but... And you want to know the real truth of what I think is the problem is the pharmaceutical. Um, I have a son that's a type 1 diabetic, and um, I have an HSA plan. It has a $4,000 deductible. His insulin at the beginning of the year, I went to pick up a uh, 60-day supply of his life-sustaining insulin. We can't afford to be without it. It was $1,610 for a 60-day supply. So I turned to my pharmacist and said, um, how much do you make off of this? And he said, $36. So it turns out, I did a lot of research on that. It turns out it's not the insurance company making the money on pharmaceutical. It's not the pharmacist. It is a middleman called a pharmacy benefit manager between the pharmaceutical company and the insurance company. They have no regulations over them. They have their paid lobbyist, and that is the one piece that no one has ever um, dealt with 
in Washington. That's because they're the lobbyists. Mm -hmm. What are they called? Pharmacy benefit managers. And, and they're the lobbyists in Washington. Yes. And so no one talks about that's the problem with health care? That's with exactly right. And so the executive director of the Arkansas Pharmacy Association, he would love, he would be a great guest for you sometime. And Who you'll have to talk about that for an hour. Um, his name is Scott Pace. Okay. Yeah. And I'll get you his contact information. But I mean, think about that. $1,610 for a, for a drug that a child has to have. Life saving. Life saving. We can't go without it. And, you know, thank goodness I had a way to get the $1,610. But how about if I didn't? You what know? would happen? And, and I guess we just go to the emergency room three times a week. Cause Which is the most expensive mm -hmm. thing that you can do yeah. to the government, right? Isn't that why we're trying to move to Obamacare? I mean, granted, sure, everybody wants all Americans to be to be covered. But politicians really don't care that much about it. It's really that the emergency room is the most expensive way to get health care from the government. And, and so they're trying to move us out of that Right, back to your primary model. care doctor. That's right. And, of course, when these subsidy, uh, these CSRs go away. What's CSR? That's the um, cost-sharing reduction, so the help with the deductible and the copay. Oh, that we talked that. about earlier. And as premium goes up, it's going to be the hospitals in the rural areas around the state that lose See, right now, people have insurance. They're going in to the doctor. They're going into the hospital to get what they need, very rarely to the ER. And we're going to go full circle right back to where we were, uninsured people using the ER as their primary care doctor. Well, surely our politicians know that. Well, you would think so. And you know, the so what is the motivating factor? Is it the lobbyists in Washington? Through my research with the pharmacy benefit managers, that's exactly what it is. There's a group of people. There's no regulation over them. Obviously, they've got enough lobbyists to pay off whoever they need to pay off. But pharmaceutical is the one thing that has not been addressed in this whole ball game as of now. And then think about the kids that are on Medicaid and our kids, for example. Well, they have type 1 diabetics also. So then that's our state dollars paying $1,600 a box for oh. insulin. So see, it's just, you know, a tangled web. But it, it, like I said, January 1, I mean, if more people go uninsured, if they lose their cost-sharing reductions, their premiums go up, their deductibles go up, I mean, they're just going to choose to go uninsured. And if you go uninsured, it came out today, you were just showing me. Yes, that um, in 2018, of course, well, there's been a question on our health, I mean, on our tax returns for four years now. Do you have health insurance? And then last year, we had to turn in a document, a 1095B, showing that we did have health insurance. You had to prove it. Well, now they're saying that they're not going to process your tax return until you check that box. Do you have it or not? I guess maybe in the past, they were letting them go through. Without them, um, but yeah, Trump signed an executive order yesterday that said that you have to check yes or no. I have health insurance, and, and then, if you say no, I don't have health insurance. Yeah, then you'll be penalized, and the penalty is two point five percent of your wages, maximum twenty one hundred dollars a year. So it's for someone that makes a lot of money, the most their penalty would be would be twenty one hundred. But you know, let's say I'm making twenty thousand a year. So I'll pay a penalty of 2.5%. And they'll take that out of my federal tax return if I get one. They won't send you a bill for it. They'll just take it out of your federal tax return. If you have a child like, you're, like you were just talking about, and you can't afford his insulin mm -hmm. because you don't make enough, and you can't afford health insurance because you're, it's too expensive also, so what you could do uh oh, you're about to say something. Well, I was just saying we have people come in the office, adults that have type one diabetes that just can't get their insulin. So what you yeah. can do, because this happened to one of my employees, he came to me and worked for me for twenty years, and he came to me and he's got diabetes, and he said, My wife is probably gonna lose her job. She works at a hospital and they have great insurance. And and she said, Um, I don't make enough to buy insurance. So I'm going to have to maybe quit my job so that I can be low income so that I can get my health needs met. And that's right. Now, she's still working though, right? She ended up not losing her job. She okay. ended up staying. He ended up staying with me. But I thought, now we're, now we're talking about throwing people onto unemployment. What kind of a weird way to get 
that's a very odd, expensive thing to do to your to, yeah, to the it, government. Yeah, it incents people not to work. Well, and you wonder and, a lot of times why are there so many people unemployed? Well, maybe they have to be because they have health problems, right? And they and the job they might get might not be enough to afford expensive health care. So they're like, I have to stay below the poverty line so that I can get benefits from my government and for my children and myself. That's right. And now in 2018, in order to get the Arkansas Works Program where 100% of your premiums paid, a family of two cannot make more than $16,240. Now, they would get free. You know, the premium would be paid by DHS, and then they wouldn't have co-pays at the pharmacy or anything. But that would mean a single person of $12,080 or, a, in, you know, two people, sixteen two forty. So they wouldn't get copays. So they're still they wouldn't get their insulin paid. No, for? they would because they wouldn't have any copays if they're that oh. if they are that far down on the poverty. Um, but you know, my so it gosh. throws more people back into poverty. Anybody who's got a health problem can know has, has and can't afford and you know makes under fifty thousand dollars a year and has health issues is going to have to go to make less than $16,000 so that they can be below poverty and they can get government subsidies. Well, and you can get a subsidy all the way up to $48,000. So if you had a single person, they can get a subsidy all the way up to 48000 if their employer or their spouse's employer does not offer a plan. But oh, to be honest to with know. you, the younger you are and the closer you are to that 48000 the less the subsidy. So our, the people getting the big subsidies are those 55 to 65, and that are in about the um, $30,000 range. All right. This is a great place to take a really quick break and get my thoughts together because we are all over the board. We want to talk about opening enrollment. We want to talk about repeal and replace. We want to talk – well, we did talk a little bit about being mandated. So when we come back, we'll continue our conversation with Robbie Davis, the untangling of the health care issues of Medicare supplements, early enrollment, Advantage plans, which I don't know what those are, and drug plans. Listen to all UIYB past and present interviews by going to flagandbanner.com and clicking on Radio Show. Also, by joining our email list and liking us on Facebook, you'll get a reminder notification the day of the show with a sneak peek of that day's guest. Back to you, Carrie. You are listening to Up In Your Business with me, Carrie McCoy. I'm speaking today with Robbie Davis, owner and founder of the health insurance company called the Robbie Davis Agency in Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, at the break... Robbie said she wanted to talk about, what did you say, Medicare open enrollment? Yes. Um, Medicare open enrollment comes around once a year, and it is from October the 15th through December the 7th. And during that time, you can ch- um, someone that's already on Medicare and a drug plan, and I'll go into all that in just a second, they can change their drug plan, or if they're on an Advantage plan, they can change from one Advantage plan to the other. So here's how this works. So someone turns 65. They are automatically going to get Part A, which is has zero premium, that pays about 80% of hospitalization because of all the times they've worked and paid in Social Security. So Part A, there's no premium attached. Part B costs the average person today $134 in premium, and um, that is paid to Social Security Administration for Part B, and that covers about 80% of um, physician and physician services. So then we buy, we sell a supplement and a drug plan so the person um, has what they need. Well, today, if someone is healthy and not on many prescriptions when they turn 65, um, we can get them in a supplement and a drug plan and their Part B for under $300. So, and of course, some of those people are paying eight, $900 right now. Now, you're talking right about now. Medicare or Medicaid? Uh, Medicare. Now, what, tell us what yeah, the difference between so, Medicare and Medicaid yeah, is. Yeah, Medicare is um, insurance provided by the government um, to a degree for people that are 65 and older or disabled after 24 months under age 65. And Medicaid. And Medicaid is for low income. And I didn't think we had to pay anything once yes. you got to be 65. So, like I said, Part A is um, no premium, but Part B depends on your income once again. Now, the average person pays, uh, if you may, if you and your spouse make $171,000 or less, then your Part B premium, as we sit here today in 2017, is 134 That will go up for 2018, most likely. We don't have those numbers yet. So, not everybody gets, medi- gets Medicare for free. No. 
I no, thought you, I you completely, to, I didn't know that. So you have to be very low income. So let's say um, when you and I visit in the future, when you turn 65, so mm-hmm. you're going to have your A, you're going to get your B, and we'll talk about what the premium is going to be for that. And you're on an individual plan, so you'll have to go on Medicare. It's not like you're at a group and can continue working. But it's going to be less expensive, so that's good. And then we'll talk about a supplement. Um, there's supplement F, there's supplement G, there's all these different ones. But no matter what the carrier, the supplements are the same because they are defined by the government. We sell a lot of the Plan G because it almost gives you 100% coverage. There's $183 deductible one time a year at the doctor. So if you had A, B, and G, you basically would have 100% coverage except for your outpatient pharmacy. And someone that doesn't take any medications or takes a few generics, you know, we can put them in a drug card for less than $20 a month. So so basically you have 100% coverage, you know, except for that one deductible at the doctor, which you may or may not meet once a year, and a few drug card co-pays. Now, an Advantage plan. Okay. So with an Advantage plan, you still purchase B, so you still got your, you know, $134 for your Part B or whatever you owe depending on your income because higher income people pay up to four hundred and $50 $50 for their Part B. So you have your Part B. Well, a Medicare Advantage plan has um, less of a premium, so that's good, especially for people that um, can't afford the premium. Right now, the premium for Plan G is $134. It just happens to be about the same as the Plan B premium. So, But the premiums are normally lower on an Advantage plan, but um, the Um, benefits are much different so you have co-pays when you go to the doctor and when you go for surgery and when you go for hospitalization and they just it seems like you know a lot of co-pays but there is a maximum the most you can be out in a year is six thousand seven hundred dollars so it's little bitty premium on the front and then sixty seven hundred dollars if you have an issue the problem is after you're in an advantage plan for a year and if you wanted to go back to a supplement then you have to go through underwriting and so, what does hey, that mean? And that means you'd have to answer health questions to go back to a supplement. They're both offered by Medicare? Um, both by, offered by a private insurance company. Yeah, the advance. So you get your A and your B from the government. Right. And then you buy a supplement. It's by a private company. Right. Or, and of course, you know, Humana, WellCare, all have one. So you get your supplement from a private company, or you can get um, the and advantage from a private company. That's right. Which is a high deductible. No, not necessarily. It's just um, a lot of copays and Normally, they're less expensive, though, as far as a premium. Yeah, so a lower premium. Pre- so you can pay more on the front and nothing on the back end or less on the front and pay up to 6700 on the back end as you incur claims during the year. But once you're in an Advantage plan, if you say, I don't like this. Now, during mm-hmm. the first year, you can have buyer's remorse and go back to a supplement. But mm-hmm. after 12 months, the only way you can go back to a supplement is if you go through underwriting. They start you all over and find out everything wrong with you. But, you know, it's not, it's it's kind of that way anyway every time you have you file a claim they find out something wrong with you and they up your insurance anyway so who really cares well you feel like they do anyway well they you know, do it's supposed to be pool rated you know where you're in with all other people in an individual pool mm-hmm. and then so but like you said we know rates are going up probably 14 percent so uh carrier. let's do open enrollment let's do open enrollment and explain to us about open enrollment okay so open enrollment for um under age 65 is going to start November the 1st, and it will go through um, December the 15th. So only 45 days. In the past, we've had 90 days. This year, we're going to have 45 days. Well, less people are going to be able to call in and get taken care of because the volume is going to be such. And, of course, people go in the marketplace on their own computer. But, I mean, like I said, it's just really going to be a problem. And the problem is right now is we don't know the rates and benefits, Because the government is switching things around every day. So you have a whole department at your place that's for... mm -hmm. We have um, Sean who works with our um, poverty people with the um, private option, which is now known as the Arkansas Works Program. And he's really, really good at that. And then Scott works with the people that um, are either paying their own way, called off exchange, or people through the federal marketplace. How do you make any money doing that? Well, and it costs no extra to use our services. We're paid a um, small fee per contract by the carrier. So, so it's and so it, to be these... honest, it's a ministry. I mean, yeah, it's not a lot of money involved in it, but we sure have helped a lot of people. 
Well, and you create relationships with people that you don't know where it's going to grow. That's from. exactly right. Wonder why? Do you think a lot of people, uh, insurance agents, were afraid of Obamacare in the beginning, thinking that it was going to hurt their business? I think um, it, when Obamacare was first passed, everybody thought that everybody was going to leave the group insurance, and they were all going to go to the marketplace, and it was going to be so great and wonderful and more affordable. I mean, that's what we were told. And, you know, it just didn't turn out that way. So now they're all going back to group insurance. And why do you think it didn't turn out that way? Because I think that um, everybody didn't sign up like they were supposed to, for one thing. You know, with only the sick people or older people signed up. And that was one of the first problems. And then we still have, like, the pharmaceutical industry that hadn't been and so addressed gonna, at all. And so now uh, we, our president has signed um, an executive order to cut supplements to these insurance companies so that now maybe even the Obamacare is going to have junk insurance. Um, yeah, because I'll tell you, if I mean, Blue Cross Blue Shield, for example, it's just, I mean, they're not making the money people think they're making. Right. And now if that gets cut, I mean, sooner or later, nobody is going to want to play in the individual market. So like this, you know, for 2019, we may have no insurance carriers in the individual market. Why do you only have three and per state? Because they just can't make money here. There's some states that only have one. So, so they're, there's really no, they're no not regulated. They're just not regulated. But they are. They are regulated, and they have to have their rates approved by the insurance c commissioner and all that. But it's just if you can't make any money, you're just not going to go there. And, of course, we're a rural state. Lots of poverty in the state. It's just hard to make money here. So we could have as many as our state is not regulating how many uh, insurance agents, insurance no. companies we have. No, no they have. just don't want to come here. Because So we know. should all write Blue Cross Blue Shield a thank you letter. Because yeah. people, they do get a bad rap. They do. And they, like I said, if, you know, if they cannot make money, like these CSRs, if that doesn't work out and they can't get the rates right and all that, I mean, they're going to lose millions of dollars and they'll just one thing. And that's it's subsidies to help lower your co-pays and lower your deductibles or what they're talking about taking away. So I think everybody should come and talk to you. Well, we certainly would love that. You know, <laughs> or email us anyway. I mean, I'm not stupid. And insurance language and is and what's going on is so convoluted. And you are so informed. You get up every morning. You watch the news. You have an anxiety attack, and then you, and then you go put, out and meet the day. I put one foot in front of the other and walk on. out to the car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what if everybody did go to Obamacare? Would it bankrupt you? Um, if we did ha come up with federal... Uh, most likely, then we would sell supplements. So if we had a single-payer system where everybody was on the same thing, then, you know, most likely then I would... It would be something, might be junk insurance, who knows at this point. So then we would sell supplements to bring you back to where you wanted to be. So would, did, would do you care? Well, I mean, I do because I like the free market and competition and you know all that but the competition's but, not working but it's not working like it is it certainly is not and like i said if we have zero people i mean carriers in arkansas in the individual market then what's going to happen if you don't have access to an employer or if you're not poverty then you won't have any supplemental incomes any supplemental policies to sell at all that's right Plus, you have to kind of do what's good for America sometimes, and I'm worried about the expense of our health care. Well, and that's why I know the current administration is trying, because, I mean, it is going to implode because the money's going to run out, you know, sooner or later. For Obamacare? For Obamacare. Now, we've not talked yet about the private option in Arkansas Works here in Arkansas. Okay, let's talk um, about The it. governor has made some changes for 2018. So currently, if you make up to $16,640, you can get a subsidy through uh, the Department of Human Services, through Medicaid. And people in that category, from 100% to 138% of the poverty level, only have to pay $13 a month right now for their health insurance. And if you don't pay it, it's not like they're going to come get you. They'll just take it out of your state income tax refund. But anyway, so $13 a month, we can afford yeah. that most likely. Right. Okay, so... Um, because of the cost and the fact that the state of Arkansas is going to have to start paying 5% of that premium, those people are going to be moved to the federal marketplace starting in 2018. And so now where I've been paying $13 a month, I may have to pay 113 a month, 213 a month, depending on where I fall on the grid. And so, and then once again, I've got deductibles and co-insurance. Those people have a good deal right now. 
but they're going to take that away from them. Now they're going to go down. You can only make $12,000 a year. Why did we do that? So because of a cost. It's just a way to help save that program money. And like I said, take those people and move them to the marketplace. So what's, and that will start happening in March. What's the so, the so the cost to the state, you mean? Yeah. Well, isn't right. that... Our state's supposed to take care so, of its people, though? Well, and they're going to take care of you if you're uh, up to 105% of the poverty level, which is about $13,000, $12,000 for a family of one. So, I, I mean, thought, you really got to be down and out on the money. So with the money that they're going to save? <laughs> then that will hopefully help you know, keep the program going for everybody. The oh, aver- I see. Yeah, and the average premium, this is what's crazy too, the average premium that the state of Arkansas pays for all those people, uh-huh. and there's 60000 in that category that are going to be affected in 2018. So the um, premium paid for them is about average over $500 a month per person, and we have over 200000 enrolled in the Medicaid program for the private option. Anyway, so over 500 a month premium every month's going to the carrier. And then the carrier's still losing money. Because once again, it's what? the sick people that, you know. And here's something interesting, too. Um, you can go to the, let's say you're uninsured and you break your leg. You can go to the um, emergency room and you can call, if you're in that category of income. 13000 13000 call our office, come see us. We can help you get enrolled in the private option or what's going to be Arkansas Works program. And currently today, Medicaid will go back three months and pick up your prior medical bills. Of course, that's going to go away because that makes no sense. You wait till your house is burning down to go get insurance. You know, there's no way that's going to ever make money. But we help a lot of people, you know, that come in and have cancer or whatever. And, you know, at least they'll get their coverage for now. This subject is just mind-boggling. Let me tell people who you are. I'm speaking today with Robbie Davis, owner and founder of the health insurance company called the Robbie Davis Agency in Little Rock, Arkansas. I'm not going to go to a break. We're going to keep going because we've only got about 10 minutes left. Anything else you want to say about health insurance? Because I'm going to move to your other passion. Oh, okay. Um, let's, I was just going to talk about health savings accounts. Y'all are okay. going to start hearing a lot about that because the current administration, you know, wants to make that happen. And so I'm a big fan of health savings accounts because now they have no co-pays, which is not great, which means you're going to self-insure yourself, say, for the first $2,000. But the premiums are lower. So the ideal is instead of having a fancy plan with co-pays uh, at the doctor and co-pays at the pharmacy, buy a health savings account, save the premium that you would have paid the carrier, put it in a health savings account at a local bank, and then anything you put in a health savings account is tax-free, and it rolls from year to year. It's like a medical IRA. So I want people to really consider those for 2018 when the new stuff comes out here in two weeks. So it doesn't take the place, though, of health insurance. Well, after you meet your $2,000 deductible, then the carrier will cover you at 100%. For example, really, yeah. So, like I said, you're out up front. So let's just say that again in lame. In, okay. okay, you go and open up a checking a savings account called a health savings account, and they come to you and you'll set that up for them. Right, right. Because well, you did that for me. That's right. And so you can put money in there. There and are then every limits. every month you take money out of my checking account and you put money in there until right. I get to my two thousand dollars. Even if it was just ten dollars a month if somebody couldn't afford any more. Mm-hmm. You know, at least they're now I'm talking about somebody that's healthy, doesn't have a lot of bills. Um, you know, you're not even planning to use it. Well instead of paying the carrier an extra hundred dollars a month, take it and put it in your savings account and then you get to take it off your income tax. And so you'll save money on that. It's tax because you take it out of my checking account, it's tax free mm-hmm. money. You're, you're gonna report it on your 1040 mm-hmm. when you do your taxes. And then when I reached $2,000, you said what happens? And then after that, you're covered by the carrier a lot of the times at 100%, sometimes 80%. It just depends on whatever plan you want to buy. Now, the plan that you have is a $2,500 deductible, and then you're 100% covered, period, for 12 months. So when I get $2,500 in there, I'm covered? Mm-hmm. Then you'll have the money to pay the carrier if you have an incident. You know, like let's say you had to go. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, if you had to have your gobbler taken out, you're like, I'd have my deductible already in my savings account. Mm -hmm. Then Mm -hmm. you really have 100% coverage. Then you really would have Mm -hmm. 100% coverage. Yeah. Yeah, that's a different way to look at it. I think I like that. So um, you're really passionate about something else. You've been an active fundraiser for the juvenile. 
Diabetes Research Foundation. Since 2010, your family's team, Parker's Pack, has raised, this is a lot, $100,000 for the organization. Tell which us about is, which that. Which is amazing for a family team. Not a corporate team, but a family team. So it's we have a, lots of good friends, <laughs> and some corporations have um, also given to that, which is wonderful. So here's the deal about type 1 diabetes. That runs nowhere in our family. My son, honest to goodness, was never sick before or since, except for this one thing. And it is so scary because they have lows. You know, your, you know, your pancreas just quits working. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Diet, weight, whatever. You know, type 2 diabetes is where you get overweight and all that. But this is just healthy child gets type 1 diabetes. And so the scary thing is, is they have, can have lows that are life-threatening. So to, to this day, and like I said, he, and he has a great attitude about it, which helps a whole lot. But anyway, every morning of his life, and of course, we're afraid to death. You know, he's going off to college next year. But anyway, I go in, turn on the light, and touch his face every morning. You to know, see if he's alive? That's what you do with a type 1 diabetic. To see if he's alive? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, so, Robbie. And, you know, thankfully, I mean, we're on top of it. And now he has recently added a continuous glucose monitor, thanks to JDRF and other people who have funded that research, so that his sugar dose, he used to have to prick his fingers eight times a day to get a little blood well, How droplet. old was he when this happened? Ten. Ten. And I mean, no, didn't know anything about it, never heard of it. And then all of a sudden he started losing weight, having excessive thirst and frequent urination. And then we went to the doctor through the um, through the um, ER. Well, we went to the doctor's office. He went to school, and I picked him up. It's the end of the fourth grade, and I picked him up. And they said, "Y'all need to go on over to Children's. I'll call and let them know you're coming." I was like, "What? What are we doing?" I drove up here, you know. Anyway, so we went to Children's, and they said, "Yep, type one diabetic." Thankfully, we stayed there four days and four nights. We had to take a test before they would let us leave with him on how to treat it. And I think nowadays you don't get four days. That was eight Probably years ago. Not. I think you get about one, you know, because of not, you know, the carriers not need, wanting to pay for it or whatever. But, yeah, we're real serious about that. And like I said, he's wanting to go way far off for school for what he wants to study. Did you say no? And, I, you know, I said, you're going to apply and we'll see what scholarships you get. And, and I'm going to write him another letter behind you and says, don't take my son. <laughs> so anyway, but thank goodness with the glucose monitor, his sugar readings, will um, we'll be able to see it on my phone, my husband's phone and his phone. At all oh, time. even if he's in Chicago, I can look at my cell phone and know when he's high or know when he's low. So and that'll be comforting. At least I can make a phone call. Oh, wow. <laughs> and wake him up or something. It's so hard to be a mother. Yeah, and it actually beeps, this monitor. Your phone beeps when you get a certain low. So, I mean, it's life-saving. That's know. the future right yeah. there. Yeah, So your husband, Scott Davis, joined your agency in 2014. You know, I work with my husband at Arkansas Flag and Banner. I want to hear how your experience has been. Well, you know why it works? He would say because he knows who the boss is and he just lets me think that I am or whatever, you know. <laughs> but it's because we never see each other at work. We are so, you know, he's tied up in the individual department and trying to make all that work. And then I'm in the group. And, and so we just, we don't see each other much at work. And What is so, your specialty? You ha I've, I've read you had a couple of special departments. You see, um, I do the group insurance. We really specialize in 2 to 50, which is a special market, 2 to 50 employees. So, of course, we have plenty over 100, too. But, I mean, it's kind of a special deal, the 2 to 50. It's different rules for them. And then we have individual department, and then we have a Medicare department. I love that you have a Medicare department. Do very many agencies have that? No. Or is that unique? I think that's unique. Yeah. And that's because you're such a caring person. Well, it, it, it is true. And I mean, they, it's not just about insurance with you. We really, I mean, you have to have a passion for it, or you couldn't keep doing you it. You have walked in Especially the shoes. Especially nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you 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 are uh, you're entrenched in it. You get up. You I wish everybody could see what the desk looks like around here. She came loaded for bear with all this stuff. And I really appreciate you having me on because it's important, I think, for the public just to understand the basics. I think you contacted me and said enrollment is going to be in November. And, Carrie, I have got to get on your show and tell people before it's too late. And I was like, I love this woman. And what's sad is I didn't even know that what happened last week was going to happen two months ago. Well, every day is a new day. Mm -hmm. um, you always come to Dancing into Dreamland. And okay. so this year I have you special invitation to Dancing into oh, Dreamland. Bless your soul. All the people that have been on up in your business with me are, are going to sit in the balcony, and there's your special 
Thank you. Invitation. So it's November the third. It's going to be great this year. We got Craig O'Neill and Pool Boy. In fact, Pool Boy is our guest next week. I, I was waiting for you to ask. That is exactly our guest next week. I know. And I also got you this because you're an Arkansan true and true. Oh. It's a desk set with a U.S. flag and the Arkansas flag for you to put in your office. I, I bet you don't have I one. I do not have one. I'm amazed how many people that I give this mm-hmm. to that go, I don't have this. Yeah. And what a great gift that would be. And I know right where I can purchase one. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, where's your son thinking about going to school? He's looking at um, Columbia in Chicago and in Rhode Island. He's with Cal Arts. Well, wherever he ends up, we'll get him an Illinois okay. or a Rhode Island flag to go in here so we'll okay. have his representation there sounds good um tim who, who did we just say was our guest last week Pool boy oh that's right i'm losing and it what, aren't what I? station is he from alice alice that's right uh i'm looking for my notes on it here hold on i've got them they're here somewhere and he's the mc of dancing in a dreamland Okay, Pool Boy's going to be on the stage. Okay, that's right. He's going to be our MC. He's done it year after year. He's great. He knows the show like the back of his hand. And then uh, Craig O'Neill's going to be on the floor. It's his first time. He saw the documentary about Dreamland and said, Carrie, I've got to help. So he's going to be on the floor. We're going to have an intermission this year. So it's going to be four dancers and then an intermission and then four dancers get up. So Pool Boy is on next week, and he has a show called Heather and Pool Boy Show. And they've been on a long time. I mean, a long time. I he, think they used to have a billboard over the bridge uh, way back in the day. And, you know, he is a really a softy. I'm going to make him tell the story about his first date with his now wife. It is adorable, and I'm not going to give it away. And just, I think last year he spoke to a division of the Arkansas Children's Hospital called Little Rock Family. And he, his topic was about love, maturity, and life's private moments. That's a young man. I love him. No wonder I love him. Okay, if you have a great entrepreneurial story you would like to share, I would love to hear from you. Send a brief bio and contact info to questions at upyourbusiness.org. And someone will be in touch. And if you want to talk to Robbie, Robbie, how do they get in touch with you? Um, our phone number is 501-954-8100, so 954-8100. And then um, we're at RobbieDavisAgency.com, and it's R-O-B-B-I, no E. So oh, right, I wrote yeah. that wrong. Yeah, as long right. as I've known you. RobbieDavisAgency.com or 954-8100. Yeah, and you can go on FlagandBanner.com's website, and we'll have all of the stuff that Robbie talked about today posted up there with all the links to important information. And we'll have her contact info there, so you can find it through FlagandBanner.com. And finally, to our listeners, thank you for spending time with me. If you think this program has been about you, you're right, but it's also been for me. Thank you for letting me fulfill my destiny. My hope today is that you've heard or learned something that's been inspiring or enlightening and that it, whatever it is, will help you up your business, your independence, or your life. I'm Carrie McCoy, and I'll see you next time on Up In Your Business. Until then, be brave and keep it up. You've been listening to Up In Your Business with Carrie McCoy, a production of FlagandBanner.com. If you miss any part of the show or want to learn more about UIYB, go to FlagandBanner.com and click on Radio Show or subscribe to her weekly podcast whenever you like, wherever you like to listen. All interviews are recorded and posted the following week with links to resources you heard discussed on today's show. And Carrie's goal is to help you live the American dream.